coalition proposes to take this country backwards, backwards to the days when people somehow believe you improved education and health by cutting funding to them. Mr Abbott, who of course cut a billion dollars from our public hospitals, enough to rip away a thousand hospital beds as a track record in cutting health. He's now calling for that same backwards looking approach to other services that hard working Australians need. Instead of creating GP super clinics, he would eliminate them. Instead of expanding trades training centres, he would end them. Instead of providing computers to children in schools, he would see none of that. The opposition's economics approach is also backwards. When the global financial crisis hit, they opposed the stimulus package. They would have sent, have sent our economy downwards into a spiral of lower incomes, lost jobs and reduced services. Now that's a spiral that they would have recommended for this country, but the wrong thing for Australians, it would have taken us backwards. And now, Mr Abbott, whatever words he tries to camouflage it in, remains committed to bringing back the worst aspects of word choices. In terms of the words he seeks to disguise his intent with, we've heard all of that before. Mr Abbott's also trying to hold Australians back by making them afraid of the future. Instead of moving forward to tackle climate change, Mr Abbott is in climate change denial. Instead of building a national broadband network, the electronic infrastructure we need to modernise our economy and help regional communities grow, Mr Abbott will down tools. Instead of supporting computers in schools and e-health, he will abandon all of it. Mr Abbott would even deny hard-working Australians increased superannuation. He would even deny regional communities new infrastructure. He even wants to stop small businesses getting the tax relief my government will provide. Now at this moment, there is clearly an opportunity for us to look forward in this nation. Australia needs many changes. This is not a moment to turn back. We've come too far as a country and we've evolved too much as a society to risk that kind of backwards looking leadership. Instead, I believe this is a moment for all of us to strengthen, to innovate, to learn, in short, to move forwards, not backwards. The choice is very, very clear, and I look forward to presenting our case for judgment to the Australian people over the weeks ahead. Thank you very much. Prime Minister, Prime Minister. Uh, yes. I think so. Are you, this is the first winter election for nearly a quarter of a century. Is your decision to sort of go now and not wait a bit longer uh, motivated by any sense you needed to, to, to have your own personal mandate, that, that, that your Prime Ministership wasn't quite legitimate? Well, I made a speech to the Australian people on the day I became Prime Minister that they would soon be able to exercise their birthright, their choice, of who should lead this nation, so I'm delivering on that promise today. I believe today is the appropriate time. Ms Gillard, why should anyone believe any of your promises since you failed to deliver so many of the ones that your uh, predecessor made in 2007? Well, I believe that uh, overwhelmingly, when one looks at the government, uh, we've been a good government. Yes, there have been some problems. Yes, there have been some lessons learned, and I've acknowledged that we've learned some lessons along the way. Uh, what I intend to do in this election campaign, and you can see from the nature of the financial commitment I've made, we won't have an election spending on, we won't have big spending promises, we will be making sure every dollar spent are offset, uh, we will make a modest set of commitments to the Australian people, and we will honour those commitments. Ms Gillard, when, you were... <coughs> when you say you're moving forward, are you moving forward from Kevin Rudd or Tony Abbott? Uh, we're moving the nation forward to deal with the challenges that the nation faces.
and to deal with those challenges with confidence and optimism. Well, Mr. 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 Mike, uh, when you stepped up to the Prime Ministership, you said you did it because the government had lost its way. Now, that was barely three weeks ago. Why would voters vote for a government, re-elect a government that has lost its way? And what's changed in the intervening period? Uh, I believe some important things have changed in the intervening period. I've made it clear to the Australian people that I support a sustainable Australia, not a big Australia, and we will develop through our Minister for a Sustainable Population strategy a plan for a sustainable Australia. I've moved to strengthen border protection with a real plan uh, for the region and for the regional processing centre. Of course, I moved to resolve the issues around the mining tax to make sure that the nation, our mining industry and our mining communities could move forward with confidence. I believe through doing those things, I've demonstrated to the Australian people the kind of way in which I will lead the nation, uh, talking to people, working with people, making decisions, moving forward, uh, embracing new solutions and changes. Ms Gillard, when you were first elected... Ms Gillard, do you believe that there are any circumstances in which a Prime Minister can reasonably break a promise? I believe that Australians understand that there are some times where objective circumstances change. Uh, I've canvassed that as a Deputy Prime Minister where uh, we faced the objective circumstances that changed in childcare. That is, in the 2007 election, we did not know that the biggest private childcare provider in this nation was going to collapse. I think when something like that happens, people understand objective circumstances have changed. Ms. Prime Minister. Obviously, obviously, in giving commitments in this election campaign, I will be giving commitments that we will implement, that I will want to implement, intend to implement, that I will be determined to implement. And can I say again, we will make sure that in making commitments that we protect the budget coming back to surplus in 2014, three years earlier than originally anticipated. Prime Minister, can, you give, us a, can you give us a sense of the emotions as you approach Government House today to seek the, uh, the start of the campaign and, uh, and secondly the standard of the campaign, do you give a commitment not to make or uh, make personal attacks a, a, central, a central part of the Labor campaign? Well uh, on, on the emotions uh, going to uh, Government House, um, this, is a, this is a big day, uh, it's a, obviously a big day for me personally but what's more important is getting the opportunity for the nation to choose its government, the start of an election campaign is a big day for the nation. Uh, so I felt that, I felt that moment as I uh, went to meet with the Governor General um, and I feel too a real sense of uh, confidence and optimism and enthusiasm about the future of this country. And that's what makes uh, you know, having a say, having a vote uh, in a nation that can have a greater future as I envisage for this country, a, a, a genuinely um, uplifting experience. Uh, on the uh, election campaign, I expect a robust election campaign. I think that's a good thing. I think Australians believe that election campaigns should test their leaders. I believe we'll all be tested in this election campaign. I think that that is appropriate because Australians want to know and understand um, how I would lead. They want to know and understand what my opponent puts forward. And I'll be saying to the Australian people, as I go about this election campaign, <coughs> that we can move forward, we can move forward with a real sense of confidence together. Prime I'm Minister, sorry. Prime Minister, you said things have changed in the intervening period. Oh, that wasn't Dennis, that was Patricia. <laughs> can, I, can, I be, can I go on? You said things have changed in the intervening period on uh, the issue of population, refugees and of course um, uh, the first decision on the mining tax, but you've said nothing on climate change and we're going into this election with um, the government saying basically nothing on this issue, which is obviously a key issue for you. Why have you not chosen to say it while you were still Prime Minister and not now in campaign mode? Uh, well, I will be having um, some more to say about climate change during the campaign. And what I can say very clearly and guarantee for you, uh, that as we announce those policies, my policies, they will be policies coming from a person who believes climate change is real who believes it's caused by human activity and who has never equivocated in that belief. 